Timing out all the rain and snow ahead, especially during this busy holiday travel period. I'm ABC 10 Chief Meteorologist Monica Woods in Sacramento out of the capital city of California. And we've got a big storm lineup that we're going to be tracking into the coming days. And again, big travel period too. Four days and counting until the winter solstice. Then we get into all the holiday fun. Christmas Day, eight days away. Kwanzaa in nine days. And then New Year's Day in 15 days. Yeah, hard to believe we're wrapping up 2023. Atmospheric rivers look pretty good here. Here's the portfolio across the Pacific, and you can see we've got this low pressure system. There's our counterclockwise circulation pulling in that moisture from the south, and that's really reinforcing all the moisture coming our way. What's interesting about this is we'll get another low coming in right behind it, which again will just kind of reinforce the active weather period into this holiday travel week. And then we get a bit of a break, but we start tracking the next one. You can see here is Christmas Day, and we got this nice big plume of moisture coming in with a tropical tap here all the way to the Hawaiian Islands. That's going to be another pretty decent period of rainfall coming into California. And not all of it's going to be a direct hit in parts of the state, but it should give us some decent totals, as you can see, over the next seven days. We'll get three to four inches of precipitation in northern California, about one to three in central two to three along the coast and then about a half an inch to an inch over towards the desert region. So we're going to see rain throughout the entire state. Here's a little bit closer perspective as we started to see the rain picking up in northern California for our Sunday. Periods of on and off moderate rain coming through for today and that snow line has been terribly high with a warmer portfolio on these storms. As far as what we're seeing for rain showers right now, basically hit and miss as we head into our Sunday. What's nice about this is we are seeing those little pockets of breaks. So the storm drains can kind of flush through periods of rain fall and allow that to kind of move through our watershed as well, including all the rain coming down the hill because, of course, the valley at a very low elevation, whereas we've got the Sierra in some places at about 9,000 to 10,000 feet. So all of that gravity will take it downhill. But um, again, it's just been basically light to moderate rain coming through for today. The Sierra, we've been really dry for today, only now starting to see pockets of snow piling up there in the high country, but it's going to be pretty slim pickings for snow for the Sierra. Total rain accumulation for our Sunday, about a tenth of an inch to almost half an inch of rain for Stockton. These will continue to go up for tonight. It's not going to be really heavy rain into the evening hours, but we will continue to see the impacts through Thursday. Periods of heavy rain actually picking up with roadway flooding, a potential that could be difficult for both the morning and the evening commute or any travel that's happening throughout that uh, time frame there and possible chain controls. We will pick up about an inch to 30 inches of snow in the Sierra. Most of the heaviest snow is going to be south of Highway 50. So the Tahoe Basin runs between I-80 right here and then Highway 50 on the southern uh, fringe of that. And Tahoe sits right in between there. A lot of folks like to take some travel over the passes there and it can be really problematic during periods of heavy holiday travel, either heading to the Sierra to get in some skiing or snowboarding or perhaps just getting over the border into Nevada. Here's a look at the bigger Pacific view and you can see that counterclockwise circulation of the load just kind of spiraling its way there. We've got another load that will drop down and kind of reinforce some of that cold air coming in, helping us to give some uh, lower snow levels and also some instability. As far as the excessive rainfall outlook, we're in that marginal range, not the biggest uh, view of the heavy rain coming in. It's not going to be in the moderate to high, and we certainly can see that at this point in the year. Periods of heavy rain will take us through Monday and Wednesday, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, with the heaviest being Monday and Tuesday, with, again, possible roadway flooding. And that will be the biggest concern, is just those little pockets that we see along the roads of accumulating rainfall. That happens especially when we get those storm drains kind of clogged. I did see a lot of the uh, leaf, uh, people picking up leaves and also the, it's called the claw. I hesitated for a moment because I don't know if everybody knows about the claws. Just basically these big uh, machines that come through 
and scoop up leaves and put it into uh, garbage trucks and then they take them away. That's kind of a thing in the Central Valley here throughout California. Here's a look at our severe weather outlook for Monday. Most of this is going to be hugging the coast. They just kind of broad brush this through the valley and into the foothills. Could see periods of heavy rain, some thunder. Uh, hear some thunder and see some lightning and some hail possible, but most of that is going to be along the coast. This active weather pattern continues all the way through Thursday morning with the risk of thunderstorms coming in Monday into Tuesday. And you'll see that snow line will start to lower here. That'll be nice because at least it will uh, take the pressure off of all that water coming down the hill. Wednesday, rain and snow with that snow level about 7,200 feet. That will be at the pass level. And then Thursday, we'll see minimal impacts from rain and snow. Most of this coming to an end for Northern California, but it continues for Southern California. As far as the winter storm severity index, kind of looking at, are we looking at an, an extreme event that's going to shut down roads and cause big failures with power outages? That's not going to be the case here throughout the Tahoe Basin. So again, as I explained earlier, here's 80. I-80 and Highway 50 on the southern end of the Tahoe Basin. Big recreation area right in that little path there, the basin of uh, that corridor. And then south of Highway 50 is where we anticipate seeing some of the bigger impacts. There are some ski resorts over there, Mammoth, Kirkwood, Bear Valley, and those are expected to get some higher snowfall totals from this particular event that's coming in. Monday, we see that snow line at about 8,500 feet. By Tuesday, that starts to drop a little bit, but it is still above the passes there. Uh, Donner Summit at 7,200 feet and Echo Summit at 7,300 feet. Finally, into our Wednesday forecast is when we start to see that drop below the passes. Now, that doesn't mean it's great news all around because unfortunately that means higher travel impacts likely chain controls and bigger delays as they kind of make sure that you either have four by four or chains on your car and they'll also be holding traffic for trucks coming through typically there's some pretty good backups that happen and then that drops to about 7,000 feet again on Thursday. Most of the heaviest accumulation will be over by then. I will say this with a caveat is that because that snow line is right about the pass level, at least we're not going to be chaining up really low and then kind of slow going all the way up through the summit and down below that. So at least we have a little bit of a break there coming in. Our winter weather advisory, that's going to be in place through our Monday north of I-80. It's going to be pretty short time frame there, only Monday morning to Monday evening for Lass and Plumas, Sierra and Washoe County. So it does extend into parts of Nevada. Also have a wind advisory in effect for parts of the northern and central Sacramento Valley. That will get going on Monday night at 10 p.m. last through Tuesday at 7 a.m. That's going to be the time frame we could actually see some wind gusts at about 45 miles per hour or higher. Certainly strong enough to knock out some power in those areas. Just be prepared. Might want to have that cell phone charged and your computer uh, charged as well. Counties included in that are going to be Butte, Shasta, Sutter, and Yuba counties. Looking at the wind profile a uh, little bit closer to the Central Valley, it's going to be slightly lower. Wind gusts up to about 30 miles per hour, 35 and some pockets there. As far as sustained winds up to about 20 to 25 miles per hour, not necessarily strong enough to have widespread power outages, but Holiday decorations are up, so we could find some of those kind of blowing around out there. And I know there's still the leaves coming down from the trees. So if you've done any raking and you got those piles out there, potential that some of that is going to be blowing around Monday night into Tuesday morning. All right, let's take a look at the timeline of some of the rain coming through. Periods of moderate to heavy rain have already been happening throughout the Central Valley for today. And then we get more of this coming in for the morning commute, largely from Stockton northward through Yuba City and then over towards the foothills. And that's why we have that winter weather advisory going into effect north of I-80, because tomorrow we see the bigger impacts actually happening in the northern part of this year and that'll be periodic as you can see on and off throughout the day Monday at noon we're seeing some pockets of break in there I think this is kind of the hard part because it's going to not be just one big band of rain that comes through and then we see some significant periods of clearing it's going to be more hit and miss throughout the entire day which means we're just going to be dodging rain and snow throughout the series of this wet weather that comes through periods of snow still happening in the higher elevations keep in mind though the Central Sierra actually has the highest peaks in the Sierra, and they tend to get 
some better precipitation in terms of snowfall when we have these warmer events, just because the Tahoe Basin is just a little bit lower in elevation. As far as our Monday afternoon commute, it is looking pretty wet out there. This is when we expect to see the potential for some thunderstorms coming through. Now at that point, the colder air actually starts to pull its way inland. We will see those snow levels drop. Here's our Tuesday morning outlook, and you can see through that 80-50 corridor and starting to see some pretty decent snowfall south of Highway 50 by the time we get through Tuesday. But overnight thunderstorms are actually possible into our Tuesday night, or I should say Monday night, Tuesday morning time frame. Once we get into our Tuesday, Wednesday, we have pretty consistent snowfall now in the Sierra. Again, mostly near the pass level, but at least we're starting to see some of that snow. And most of the ski resorts will actually benefit from this. As far as the valley is concerned, another evening commute where we're dealing with the on and off rain. Wednesday morning, we start off dry, but then we start to see some more moisture working its way in. We actually need a lot of this rain. Here's a look at our just sheer numbers, our raw numbers for our statewide precipitation since the beginning of the water year on October 1st, and then we'll take this all the way through next year, September 30th. For California, that's how we kind of have those benchmarks for our water I should say bookmarks, really. Uh, so we're down by about two to almost three inches for some of our bigger places, five inches below normal for Redding. Keep in mind, our biggest reservoirs are in the northern part of the state, and seeing those numbers down like that isn't the best news, but I'm going to show you why it's not terrible news. Sierra snowpack, also the snow water equivalent, looking pretty low, only 15 to 35 percent at this point. That's going to put our statewide average at 28 percent. For our average to date, we could use a whole lot more, just not seeing it at this point. We're early in the season. We still have a lot of January, February, and March to get through, and those can be some pretty good snow months for us. Here's a look at our reservoir supply, and this was why I was saying the precipitation and the snowfall isn't the biggest deal this year because of how many atmospheric rivers we had last year and the incredible amount of snowpack that we had. In fact, historic snow for the central and southern Sierra. So our water supply is running about 120 to 130% of average throughout the northern part, Shasta, Oroville, and Folsom, Shasta being our largest reservoir in the state. We're at about 50 to 65% Full. And the reason why that's so important to look at the capacity that we have, because we need some room for the water that's going to be coming down the hill because this is largely initially a rain event in the Sierra. So all that uh, is going to be rushing into those reservoirs. As far as New Malonis, Don Pedro, San Luis, that's more in the central Sierra Basin, anywhere from about 100 to 150 percent of average. And about 50 to 80 percent full right now. So Shasta prepares for the wet season. They release the water. This is running very similar to 1982-83, another big El Nino year for us. Now we did actually have some flooding in that year, but you can see we're a little bit lower than that this year. And just preparing for the influx of potentially some runoff. And then when the snow melts, that's when we start to see bigger increases into those reservoirs where we start to hold some of that water because then we head into just uh, dry weather. We don't get any storms coming through basically late May through late September, and then things will start to pick up again. But this is the time of year we just kind of have to prepare for the potential for flooding, and that's really what water managers do. Even for a smaller reservoir like Folsom, they're going to empty a lot of that water because that's going to fill up a little bit quicker. So very similar, that line will fall during this time frame and then start to pick back up as we head into uh, the period of time when we see the snow melt and they are able to hold a little bit more of that water per uh, U.S. Army Corps of Engineer rules that they set forth to prepare for uh, protect from flooding and also to prepare for water storage. Here's a look at our atmospheric river rundown from last year, and this is really what gave us all that water coming into those reservoirs. We saw a number come in. The biggest that we saw really hit late in December into January. It gave us a lot of flooding. You know, the Ghost Lake, Tulare Lake filled up and 
we saw a lot of impacts with flooding. This is the reason why we really like to keep a close eye on how these atmospheric rivers are coming in. Also, the space in between them. That can play a huge role in how much flooding we see, how, how quickly water managers are able to release some of that water from the reservoirs. So far, it looks like we got a lot of blue and green dots. So the Center for Western Weather and Water Extreme saying it's going to be an AR1 or AR2, mostly beneficial. Some hazardous with some minor flooding going on, but pretty much this early in the game. We don't have saturated ground and those reservoirs aren't sitting at a dangerously high level. Looking at a wider view, because I know we've got a lot of travel happening in the coming week or so. Uh, for Southern California, the hit and miss showers I mean, really, really light into our Monday morning. Most of this is hitting Northern California for tomorrow. And then we'll start to see some of those impacts grow a little bit later on in the afternoon and evening into Central and Southern California. But again, most of this is going to be a Northern California event early in the game. On and off showers for Southern California into Tuesday morning. Most of this heavier rain is falling in Northern California. There's some of the snow. And as I mentioned, south of Highway 50. That's where we're really seeing some of the bigger snow impacts from this because of those higher elevations running 9,000, 10,000 feet in some places. Tuesday afternoon. All right, now it's starting to expand along the coast here. So if you're traveling throughout California, Monday, Tuesday into Wednesday, uh, it's just going to be one of those that we're dealing with the wet roadways and just on and off rain and some snow in the Sierra. By Wednesday, this is the interesting part, and this is why I said, okay, so the snow line lowers, but we're not necessarily seeing the biggest snow accumulation at this point, is on Wednesday, we've got that low setting off the coast, and then it kind of is sliding its way southward here. And as it does so, we'll see the rain continue for the valley, but we're going to see some pretty good pockets of dry weather for the Sierra. By Thursday morning, we're pretty much winding things down for the northern part of the state, but this is sliding its way southward, which means from central coast all the way through southern California, we still have accumulated rainfall coming in. Now, for localized rainfall amounts, anywhere from about an inch to over two inches of rain, we'll see about two to three, almost four inches of rain in some areas for the foothills. For the Sierra, Tahoe Basin, we're going to get about a foot of snow, but it's going to take some time, and we're going to be getting a combination of rain and snow. I don't think you're going to be seeing those big, huge snow packs on the side of the road like what we did last winter. Uh, we'll see some, but uh, they'll be on and off chain controls and travel delays in the Sierra, just not the best weather event for us. And this falls in line with what we're going to be seeing into the new year as well, likely warmer and likely wetter, especially along the coast for the Climate Prediction Center 8 to 14 day outlook. We got that first wave moving through. You can see how that counterclockwise circulation just kind of pulls its way into Southern California during the day on Thursday, and then it will pull inland. Now, here's what happens as we head deeper into that time frame. By Friday, we see a little weaker wave move through. This isn't a really well organized and um, big robust system for California, but Friday, if your travel plans take you into the Sierra, be prepared for the potential of some overnight snowfall. Also traveling northbound into Oregon and Washington, we are going to find some snow. This could get really interesting there along I-5 near Shasta and Redding. I'm not anticipating that we're going to have snow down to Redding, but you know how it goes over any of the passes in California. When we get a little bit of snow, grapevine included, we uh, have to have uh, concerns for how those travel delays will be impacted. The good thing about these warmer uh, weather systems that come through is the grapevine is going to see it looks like rain through this entire series of events. So Friday, again, this is when we see some of the impacts coming through the Pacific Northwest. It's a quick mover, though. It's out of here by Saturday into Sunday. And then even into Monday, we're really not seeing much in the way of wet weather, except very uh, northern parts of California into Oregon. That'll be right along the coast. So a little bit of wet weather right there. It's early in the game, so this timing is going to shift a little bit. But right now, it looks more and more becoming consistent that the rain event is going to hold off until Wednesday the following week leading up into New Year's. This is going to be our next big weather maker that we'll be tracking. Uh, again, three-month outlook falls really closely to what we would typically see in an El Nino year, which we are in right now. Wetter than average across much of California, especially Southern California, and then warmer 
then average through the Pacific Northwest. And it looks like that will fall through California as well. Looking at our local conditions for the forecast into our Monday for Northern California. Highs in the 40s, again, pretty, pretty warm up there in the high country. 50s to near 60 for the foothills. It's going to be all rain event for the foothills. 60s and 50s along the coast. And as we head inland, very similar conditions there. Morning lows near 50. Highs will warm to near 60. Five-day forecast, we have Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday with snow and rain mixed in there. And then a slight chance of those early morning showers on Thursday. We'll return that for Friday late in the day. We'll see that in the foothills, but it will be an all-rain event. And then obviously for the coast, all rain there as well. Looking at our 10-day forecast, we have periods of just on and off showers here. We get through Wednesday and then early Thursday, we get a break. A uh, slight chance of those late-day showers for the valley on Friday, but it's a better chance we'll see some of those snow flurries coming in and then next Tuesday is when we see our next weather maker pull on in and that will take us through Wednesday and possibly beyond as well so we'll be updating you as these uh, weather models continue to get more consistency with the deeper forecast with in-depth forecasts and weather specials you can check that out on ABC 10 plus with mega flood water wasted or California drought series and extended forecasts just like this we'll continue to update these especially during this super busy holiday travel period.